Generally, I'm hoping that you're interested enough in what I say that it piques your interest to enough to read some Ayn Rand. That's my goal. Right? It's not to convince anybody, it's really to create some cognitive dissonance we talked about, right? But to create some interest so that you read um, more of Ayn Rand's. And of course, if, if, uh, if you're interested in following me, uh, I do have a YouTube channel um, where I, I, uh, I, I do a show just me talking about stuff uh, pretty much, uh, I don't know, four times a week, something like that, when I'm, when I'm actually home, which is rare these days. So, war. All right, there they are. Um, so, war. Well, let's start with the basic fact that war is incredibly horrific. It is destructive. This is what they want to prevent people from saying. The evil of war. War is the evil. Uh, people die. Property is destroyed. Civilizations can be wiped out. Whole peoples can be wiped out. There's nothing more savage. There's nothing more brutal. There's nothing more destructive in human experience in the history. Okay, I can talk about music in the background. That's, uh, that's <laughs> we can we'll all survive this, right? <laughs> DNB uh, is a taste of Bristol. What's that? DNB is a taste of Bristol. It's just not the first time. It's not, I, I, I assume, not going to be the last time either. If they just stay out there and they try to disrupt them out there, that's fine. Um, they should come in and ask questions. That, that would be the reasonable thing to do, right? Uh, but, uh, but the unlikely thing to do. So, I think we have to start with the with fact, with the reality that if you care about human life, if human flourishing is your standard, if human well-being is your standard, if being if being successful in life is your standard, and so is mine, and it is for every healthy human being, then war is the worst possible outcome for any. If you value individual life. If individual life matters, and at the end of the day, what life is there except for individual life, right? Each one of us is a life. There's no collective life. So there's no collective anything, really. There's individuals. And then again, war is truly horrific. So the question is, why do we do it? You know, why does a, uh, a, you know, a, a species, and, and really war is unique to human beings, other species don't do it. Why is, why do we as a species engage in warfare? What is it that drives us to engage in the slaughter of other human beings and the destruction of property and civilizations in mass? And of course, all of human history is one war after another war after another war after another war. This is not an aberration. There are few periods in human history that have seen relatively pe relative peace. We just lived through one. The last 80 years in Europe have been a period of relative peace. So I think it's important to study both what leads up to a war and what ultimately, why ultimately you have these periods of peace? What ends wars? What leads us to a situation where war is, you know, people abandon the idea of war? And we, and the periods of peace are important because I think they tell us a lot about the value systems that people adopt when they abandon warfare. I think they're causal. So it's important to find the causal of warfare. So we look at wars. What's interesting is that we today and, and through a, a chunk of our history understand that violence between individuals is wrong. You know, maybe those people out there don't quite have got a quite the message <laughs> civilization about this. But generally there's a certain understanding that violence between individuals is wrong. Will Smith getting up on stage and slapping Chris Rock, I assume you saw that in the Academy Awards, 
is law. You don't use violence, you don't use force. What we haven't yet completely accepted is there even a group, that a group deciding to use force and another group is wrong. And the question is why? And the question is do we really understand why violence is wrong between individuals? Why is it wrong if I insult you for you to punch me in the face? As Chris Rock, again, or Smith did. What, what is wrong about that? Indeed, there are many people on Twitter and elsewhere defending Will Smith. He was insulted. It's funny because, you know, the people who supposedly defend free speech on the right are suddenly defending Will Smith's right to punch him. So it's okay, it's okay to punch if your wife is insulted, but it's not okay to punch, I don't know, a Nazi. I, I don't know. Or, or it's, so if the left does it, it's wrong. But if Will Smith does it, I, I don't even know what his politics are, it's okay. So there is generally, on left and right, real confusion about why it's wrong for individuals to engage in violence against one another. Because, and why it is that free speech is so important? Need a big, uh, big speaker? Why don't we actually just concentrate on what you can say, I am. I'll just make side comments once in a while. <laughs> just for the fun of it. I'm not going to debate them. You know, have a time. What's that? I can't hear you. That's part of the problem. Just as if they can say. I'm trying. Believe me, I'm trying. But uh, if I joke once in a while about the fact that they're out there, I don't think that's a bad thing. Right? Uh, plus, it'll give the people watching the video some context of what's going on. <laughs> they're not experiencing it live. So uh, you got to you got to use the opportunities given to you. So. so what is it about individual violence that is wrong? Well, I think to know that, to understand that, we first have to understand what it is that human needs to consist of. What is it that makes us human? What is it that allows individuals to thrive, to flourish, to be successful? Because if we're making the case that wars are anti-human, if we're making the case that wars are bad for humanity, bad for individual flourishing, well, what is it that individual flourishing actually consists of? And what does it require? And only then can we see whether violence is pro-individual flourishing or violence is anti-individual flourishing. Right? We might be able to observe the fact that it's anti, but it'd be good to understand the actual causes behind it. So what does it mean to be human? What is it that makes us human? What is it that allows us to be successful as human beings? Ignore. What is it that makes it us succeed as human beings. So, what, what, what is it that makes us human? And don't say thumbs. <laughs> what, 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 what's the difference between us and every other species out there in, in, in the world? Perhaps the ability for empathy? The ability for empathy, but is that really, you know, did, did we advance from the caves to where we are today because of empathy? Adaptability. Adaptability, yes, we're very good at adapting, but what causes us to be able to be adaptable, right? Adaptability is a feature. The question is, what is it about us that makes it possible for us to be to adapt? Well, uh, analytical judgment skills, principle by the engine, that's uh, all human beings are sentient, so that's only we're going to get to human beings actually make those critical judgments. So critical judgments? Well, human has everlasting rate. Like, it doesn't matter. Everlasting? Greed. Greed. Yes. Greed. Um, yes, we, we, you know, it depends on how you define greed. Um, we, we, we want more. We want better. We want to advance. But the question is what makes it possible for us to advance. It's not the wanting that is enough. And indeed, why do we want more? What leads us to want more? What is the source of the wanting? But, what was your name? Edward. Edward is on the right track. What makes us different? What makes us human? And it's a little bit shocking that any group, this isn't self-evident, and it says something about the education system, in my view. Right? What makes a student is not a capacity to reason. It's a capacity to think. It's a capacity to figure stuff out. That's the difference. 
That's how we change our environment. That's how we get more. Right? That's all of that is part of the fact that we can think, we can plan, we can change our environment to fit our needs, we can manipulate the world to make it better for us. And we do that by using our mind, by using our reason. Reason is man's means of survival. It is our basic means of survival. There is no humanity without a capacity to think, without a capacity to reason. Because, think of it, um, at the very basic level, anybody here have the gene for hunting? Or the gene for agriculture? How do we hunt? You know, have you ever seen, I don't know, what's a wild animal that you hunt here? Or a nature type, what do we hunt here? Deer. Deer. You ever seen a deer? You all know what a deer is, right? The fast. You try running down a deer and biting into it and slowing it down or whatever. You can't do it. You can't do it. We're, if you look around the room, we're a good specimen. We're a good sample of humanity here in this room. Maybe a little too male. Maybe a little geeky. But generally a good, good sample of humanity in this room. And we're pathetic when it comes to physical abilities. We're slow. We're weak. We have no claws. We have no fangs. We have no ability to survive out there without what? Without our wits. Without the ability to grab weapons. Without the ability to have a strategy catch the deer. Without tools. Without traps. You can't go hunting. Hunting is a cerebral activity. It's an activity of the mind. Agriculture is the same thing. We don't know how to, I mean, for hundreds of thousands, for tens of thousands of years, we didn't do agriculture. It's only in the last 10,000. Did we do it? Some genius figured it out and created a whole industry around it. So, every achievement that human beings have made, every more, every step forward, every advance, is a product of the human mind. It's a product of reason as a product of rational thinking. We don't emote this. You don't discover truths through emotions. Maybe truth about yourself, but not about the world. You don't figure out new technologies. You don't write program software based on emotions. All of that is a product of your mind. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support. Or go to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.